Hello, my lovely library lions. This is Danny, and today we're going to be unboxing the February 2021 Owl Crate, which was called Magic Unleashed. So this is the spoiler card that they've given us here. It's quite cute. I like how they all have different styles and it's diverse. I've really loved the spoiler cards since this new artist started. Um, every single one has been an absolute work of art. So let's get started and see what we have in this month's box. So the first item that we got in this month's box was the Lost Jawa Rat. This is a bath salt inspired by We Hunt the Flame, which was a previous Owl Crate book, and it's done by the Soap Librarian, so she's worked with Owl Crate before. Just open it up here. It's a very bright and citrusy smell. It's very refreshing, very clean. There's a good quantity, so you probably get a few bats out of it, which I always enjoy. Um, I'm very excited to get to use this. I love when Owl Crate does sort of um, bath items. Because you don't have to keep them around on your shelves and counters forever. You just get to use them and they're done. It's a nice functional item and I'm excited to enjoy it. So that's the first item we've looked at today. I was initially really excited when Owlcrate said that they were going to do a Legendborn item because it was my favorite book that they had in Owlcrate last year. Unfortunately, the item we ended up getting is a zipper pouch. If you've been subscribed to Owlcrate for any length of time, you have a lot of zipper pouches. And I have a lot of zipper pouches. Also, the design is a little blurry. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it is a little blurry. It's not a super clear design on the fabric. It says, fight, take risks, follow your heart. So it's a quote from Legendborn. I don't feel like the design really evokes Legendborn. I don't really like the design personally. And again, it is just the slightest bit fuzzy, which makes it look not super high quality. Um, the pouch itself is nice material. I imagine it works to hold things in. Um, this is designed by By Chanel and I've seen some of her other stuff and really enjoyed it. So I'm just disappointed that this is what we got for Legendborn. I would have rather had like a cute sticker or a candle or something. Keeping with the theme of sort of functional items, Owlcrate included this. So just a side note, I love when they have the little star and moon bags as opposed to plastic packaging. Um, I think they're so cute and I love to use them for other things. So let's take a peek in here. If I can undo this knot. It's just a very basic brush, sort of like you would find at the dollar store. So there's nothing special about it until you turn it around for the design. So this is a design done by Team Owlcrate and it's based on Star Daughter, which was another Owlcrate book that was last year. Um, it's definitely gonna chip. It's not gonna last very long. I can already see some signs of wear and tear on it just from being in the package, but it is a cute design. It's subtle enough that people won't know really what it is unless they are huge Star Daughter fans, which, you know, I don't think the book ever really got that big. It was all right, but it wasn't something I was super invested in. So it is nice. Um, it's a functional brush if you have straight hair. It's not going to work on curly hair, as I've seen people pointing out, which is sort of a bummer because only some people can use it. I'll end up using it. Again, it's just sort of a basic item. I'm not really, really excited about it, but I do like that it's functional at least. The other fandom that was mentioned that I was really excited about was Daughter of Smoke and Bone, and it ended up being a keychain. So I sort of hoped this would be a bigger item, but the keychain is very pretty. Let me take a closer look at it for you guys. So if you can see it on the camera there, it does say Poison Kitchen, which is Karu's favorite restaurant in Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I do like this. I think it's a very cute keychain. I like the attention to detail that it was shaped like a coffin, the way that the tables at Poison Kitchen are. And I just think it's a really cute keychain. And it almost looks sort of like something you would get if you went on vacation to Prague and went to like a themed restaurant. It has the uh, location and the name of the restaurant. So it is cute. I would definitely use it if I didn't already have enough keychains um, already. I do have quite a few. This design is by Lively Ghost. So again, this is quite a nice keychain. Bring it up close to the camera so you can see it. It's very cute. 
Um, I don't really have a use for it, but I'm glad that they included something inspired by Daughter of Smoke and Bone because it's such a nice series. The final item that I want to show off this month before we get to the pin and book is the new collectible book tin series that Alcree is doing. So it comes in this nice box here. They are doing one book tin per each London from the Shades of Magic series, and it is uh, designed by Forensic and Flowers. I love that they have like this collectible box that tells you which volume it is and that it's part of a set. So this is beautiful. I can't wait to see the other ones, um, Grey London, White London, and Black London. And let's take a peek inside of here. So the actual book tin is a massive. It is much bigger than the other book tins that they've included, and it actually has a spine that looks like it would work well on a shelf. I love the red and gold details. It says Magic and Madness, the Maresh Monarchy. So it's based on a book that you might find in a library in Red London. Um, the cover is just absolutely gorgeous with the scales and the rows, the way that the stars and the design glitter. Um, the pages are very sort of reminiscent of a map, the way that some of the covers of the Shades of Magic series are, which I adore. And we even have some design on the back here. It says As Travers, which is what Kel says to travel through the Londons. Beautiful. And what I really loved about this piece is when you open it up, it has even more detail on the inside. Blood was magic made manifest. There it thrived. So beautiful design on the inside, a lot of space to keep whatever you want inside of it. Um, again, absolutely massive, much bigger than the other book tins. You could probably fit one of the old book tins inside of this one. And I am so excited to see the other three that they're going to release this year. It's going to look so nice on a shelf, especially if you line them all up together. I think that's going to look stunning. Icy Designs is doing all the pins for 2021, and she has included a pin inspired by Owl Crate's book this month. And this is the pin. I think it is absolutely gorgeous, the way that it's an eclipse. I like that it's black and gold, but has also included some teal flare, um, which suits with the cover that we have this month really, really well. I think it's stunning. Maybe one of the prettiest pins we've had in a while. Um, this is even just, you could wear it if you use your pins as brooches. And it's gonna be a very nice display piece. I'm super happy with this pin. I think it's, uh, really evident that Icy is a great designer, and I love the moon here. Oh, it's just it's so nice. The book this month is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. There is so much hype around this book. I'm so excited to finally get into it and read the story. It's supposed to be so good. So the thing that Alcrate has done this month is all this design in the background of the cover, so sort of intricate design, is unique to Alcrate. The normal edition just has a gradient from yellow to green there. I think that's actually a really nice addition. It's subtle, but it does add a lot to the cover and the way that it looks. They've also said that they've included a custom foiling on the inside, which is that design there, and I think that is stunning. I love when books have custom foiling on the front. I think it adds so much to the naked hardbacks, especially for people who like to just have naked hardbacks on their shelf. So, let's read what the blurb is about. 16-year-old Decca lives in fear and anticipation of the blood ceremony that will determine whether she becomes a member of her village. Already different from everyone else because of her unnatural intuition, Decca prays for red blood so she can finally feel like she belongs. But on the day of the ceremony, her blood runs gold, the color of impurity, and Decca knows that she will face a consequence worse than death. Then a mysterious woman comes to her with a choice. Stay in the village and submit to her fate, or leave to fight for the emperor in an army of girls just like her. They are called Alakai, near immortals with rare gifts, and they are the only ones who can stop the empire's greatest threat. Knowing the dangers that lie ahead, Yet yearning for acceptance, Decca decides to leave the only life she's ever known. But she journeys, as she journeys to the capital to train for the biggest battle of her life, she discovers the great walled city holds many surprises. Nothing and no one are quite what they seem to be, not even Decca herself. In this bold and immersive fantasy, a young heroine fights to save a world that would dare to tame her and discovers that she is her own fiercest weapon. This sounds like it's going to be such a good story. 
Um, I love that it's diverse, that it's set in West Africa, because we don't get a lot of fantasy that is set um, outside of European settings that really sort of gets the attention that this is getting. So I'm hoping this will be really big, that everyone will love it, and I hope that I love it more than anything, because I so want to. Got a nice spine there, and the back is also very pretty, again with the custom patterning that Owlcrate has done for this month's book, which I think adds so much. They've included an author letter this month, as always. It is a little bigger than most author letters, so I won't be reading it, but it is nice to have the look into the author's mind about what they were thinking about when they wrote the book, and it always serves as a really nice introduction before you read the book to read the author letter and get into the mindset and get ready to read. So we're about to spoil next month's box. March's theme is going to be of Witches and Wonder. So I already have a guess at what this book is going to be, and it's one that I'm excited about, so I can't wait. And the spoiler is that every box will receive a stationary item designed by Talia Skiles. Um, for some reason, a lot of people weren't happy that there was a stationary item being announced. I've always personally liked the stationary items because I can use them. They're things that I can use every day. I don't like sort of the fabric items. Those are the ones that I avoid. I don't know why this is the stationary item that broke the camel's back and no one wants another stationary item, but I'm excited for it. All right, so that's it. That was everything that was in our February 2021 Owl Crate. I thought this was a much better Owl Crate than we've been getting recently. Um, I really enjoyed almost every item in it. Again, some of the things are like not great, but the book tin and the bath salt absolutely pull it to the level that I have expected Owl Crate to be and have been disappointed that they haven't been hitting recently. So I'm very excited to see what's in the March Owl Crate. I have high hopes again, and I hope that you all have a lovely day.